The last case we need to consider is the situation in which you're applying the law of sines and two triangles can be formed. So we've already seen the case when one triangle can be formed and zero. But it is completely possible that just by nature of the information you're given, two triangles are possible. So if in our usual setup, if that's A, that's B, side C again, we're trying to determine where it could be. Let's say uh, this time we're told that A is 30 degrees and C is 8. And let's say we're, we're, we're given information about A. Now we saw that A could be a could be given and it's too short. No triangles are possible. And we saw how the algebra works out when that's the case. We could be given a situation in which uh, A is just long enough to make it down here. And in that case, one triangle would be formed. I should have mentioned that there's another way in which one triangle could be formed. And that is, and I just didn't have time in that video, that is you're given side A and it's really long. So that when you swing it over here, you can make a triangle. But if you swing it over here, you can. So there's another way that one triangle can be formed, which we'll, we'll, we'll discuss as we work through this problem. There is, however, another situation, and that is this side A is a little bit longer than the one we saw in the previous video, but a little shorter than the one that would swing over here to make one triangle. There is a certain range of lengths that would allow there to exist two possible triangles given this con these conditions. So for instance, if this was the side length, let's say this is 7, one of the triangles that could exist is this one here. Okay, there's a triangle. So notice that I kept the length the same. I'm going to keep the length the same and swing it over here. However, this also could be the triangle if that's 7. So if this, uh, this length here is 7, I swing it over here, there's a triangle that could exist where A is 7, but there's another one. So there's two triangles that could exist if I'm told that side A is 7. And so the nuance in this problem is that you've got you've to solve both triangles if that's possible. So let's just look at the algebra, how it works out. Um, you go about solving using the law of sines. And as soon as you notice that you're using the law of sines and you're solving for an angle, right? Because we're using the law of sines since we have a full set of information. But as soon as you notice that you're solving for an angle, that's when you know you have to consider the possibility that there could be two triangles that could be formed. So when you cross multiply and solve, I'll sort of do this quickly. What you get is 8 sine of 30 degrees turns out to be uh, 4 sevenths. Which means that angle C is equal to sine inverse of 4 sevenths. And that produces an angle of 34.85 degrees. So I'll just put it in the diagram as well as here. All right. Um, notice now we can solve for angle B. But before we do that, I just want you to, to draw your attention to the fact that that angle C here was this one, but we've already said, seen that there could be another triangle with side A being 7 that looks like this. See? So now, in this case, this is also 7. This is a whole new triangle. And in this whole new triangle, side, angle A is still 30 degrees. And side C is still 8. And side A is still 7. But it's a new triangle. So we have to duplicate the setup that we started with. which was that this is 30 degrees, that this is 7, and that this is 8. However, 
Angle C now is not 34.85 degrees. It's, it's whatever this angle is here. And fortunately, we have a, a nice way of getting it uh, that uh, results from the just sort of the, the layout of this diagram here, right? Because if this is, look at this interior triangle here. That's 34.85 degrees. And that's 7 and that's 7. That means we're looking at an isosceles triangle, so the base angles are the same. So that angle here is also 34.85 degrees. And since these two angles lie on the same line, they're supplementary, which means they add up to 180 degrees. And so if you do 180 degrees minus 34.85, that's what you put here in the second setup. So you don't have to be drawing, when you solve these problems, you don't have to draw diagrams. You don't have to necessarily draw diagrams. In fact, it's kind of difficult because you don't know sort of, you'd have to be really, you'd have to have a ruler or something to kind of get a, uh, an intuition as to whether your triangles are possible. What you do have to do is go about solving the triangle. Once you get that angle, subtract it from 180. If you subtract it from 180 and you get an angle that's, that exists, then you got to do another whole setup and put that as your alternate angle C. Okay, and then um, the unfortunate part is now you got two triangles to solve using the straightforward law of, of uh, law of sines. So you know you can start, subtract from 180 to get this angle here, you know, 115.95 degrees. And if you add these up and subtract from 180, you get 4. Point, uh, 4.85 degrees. Okay, and then you have to go about solving for angle B in both different triangles. Um, but without a diagram, go about solving it as usual. As soon as you notice you're solving for an angle in the law of sines, that's what sort of should alert you to the fact that you probably need to consider the possibility that there's going to be two triangles. Okay, and so once you get this angle, if you do get it, subtract it from 180 and do, a, do an alternate setup and then solve completely. Okay, so uh, I know it's, it's not the funnest thing to do when it happens. You kind of hope it doesn't happen, but uh, it is interesting to see that when you're just given ang uh, in triangle information in this setup, in this arrangement, there's a whole range of things that could possibly happen.